funding. This is extremely important. I've seen I don't know how many people say they're going to go homestead and they're going to live off their land and earn all their income off their land. That is the dumbest thing you could ever think. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's stupid to feel like you can do that if you are, have no experience. So what I'm going to recommend is if you are a couple, at least one of you, keep a steady job that has a steady income. I'm not talking about McDonald's where your hours are up and down. You know, factory, office job, commissioned or hourly or, you know, salaried, as long as it's a steady income. Because that steady income is what you have to base your budget on for the next year or the next five years or the next 10 years, right? If both of you can keep your job, that's even better. A lot of companies now, especially with COVID-19, a lot of companies now are transitioning to work from home. I've always been work from home, but you know, there's a lot of people that never used to work from home that are friends of mine that are suddenly working from home. And those companies are talking about making it permanent. So <clears throat> maybe you have a job where you work in an office and they're okay with you working from home now that you've proven that it's possible. And that's the nicest thing about my job is that I get up in the morning, I'm not rushed to get all the animals taken care of, get all of the goat shit, chicken shit, rabbit shit cleaned off of me before I run into the office because I can sit down and work with shit all over me and I have done that. <laughs> you know, so either way, you want a steady income until all of your homestead goals are solved. If you were to go get a homestead and think you're going to live off of what you produce in the garden, and if your garden fails, you have no income. So keep that in mind. Always have a steady income. That income not only sees you through the difficult times on your homestead, it funds your homestead. Yeah, with no income, you're not doing nothing on your homestead. <laughs> so keep a job. Already touched on the work from home. So we'll skip that. This is like, I don't know why city folks have this problem. Like they cannot do without. If you're going to be living in the country on a homestead and you're trying to do a simple life, you need to learn how to do without. You need to learn how to do without new clothes. See a shirt? Six years old. These shorts I got on, six years old. These shoes I got on, six years old. The socks I got on, six years old. The underwear I don't have on, rotted out a year or two ago, but they were, you know, that old. I'm kind of joking, but I'm kind of maybe not. We'll leave it up to you to figure out. But new clothes. You don't need new. Who are you trying to impress? Like, I, I am me. I, I actually posted this on Facebook, and it's kind of fitting for this video that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I, I never intended to do this. But I posted on my Facebook page earlier today that when I was younger, I thought success was measured by what I owned. So I wanted nice clothes and nice shoes and nice cars. And I wanted the best I could afford, right? And sometimes I couldn't even afford it. And I bought it anyways. Because to me, success was reflected in what I owned. And as I got older, I realized success is measured in the knowledge you have. So whatever you do, never stop learning because my knowledge has gotten me out of so many problems. You know, if something happens, my roof starts leaking. I know how to put a new roof on myself. I don't have to wait on someone to come here and give me an estimate and fight with the insurance company or paying them. I just go get the materials and do it and it's done. Other things that people can't do without. The first three years that I lived here, I never had trash pickup. And that saved me um, $150 a year because they bill quarterly at $57 a quarter. So actually more than a little more than $150. Saved me $150 a year for the first three years I lived here. And um, I'll be honest with you, I haven't set the trash out in two months. And my trash can's half full because for that three years, I got so used to being conscious of what I bought so that I could recycle it or use up my compost pile that it just kind of stuck with me. 
And even though I have trash pickup now, I set out trash two or three times a year and I probably should cancel the service. There's another reason why I actually got it to begin with when I did get it, but that reason's not here now, so I can probably cancel it and be just fine. Um, cable TV. <laughs> I see people like, oh, I've got all of the channels. I pay $260 a month for my TV. Are you f***ing stupid? All right. Got to do this over for YouTube. $260. That is dumb to pay that every month for TV. Trust me. If you're doing a homestead, you ain't going to have time to watch TV. Rock bottom price. Get you Philo, which is 50-some channels, $20 a month. Or use Netflix, $9 a month. Only watch movies. Or use, if you already got Amazon Prime, don't have Netflix or Philo. That just saved you $30 a month. Only use the Amazon Prime. It's free with your Amazon Prime account. So, you know, you just don't need all that TV. Um, a lot of people are going to diss me over this one because I've always had a cell phone. My job requires a cell phone. But if your job doesn't require a cell phone, do you really need a cell phone? And the same thing goes with the landline. If your job doesn't require a landline, do you really need a landline? When's the last time you used a landline, by the way? New cars or trucks? You don't need a new car or truck. I've, I, I can't say I've never had a new car or truck. I've not had a new car or truck the whole time I've been homesteading. Um, I've always bought used. And matter of fact, my truck that I bought the first year that I moved here, I only, I said, if it lasts me three years, I did great. And I've had it five years now and it still works fine. It does everything I need it to do. And I paid $9,000 for it. So, um, over five years period, I've paid less than 2000 It was $2,000 a year for my cost of that truck. Less than. Um, tractor. In six years, I've not once needed a tractor. I've thought about buying one a million times. But I can't justify buying it because what would I really use it for? Like... If I really need, I could probably go rent a tractor if I really needed one. I'm not going to buy one, especially even a new micro tractor is twenty-seven thousand. Don't do it. Uh, and if you do require a tractor, maybe you got a bale hay or something like that. Buy used. You can buy a used tractor to two to four thousand dollars. It's a lot, and that's a in a fifty horse range, whereas a fifty horse range new is going to sit back about thirty-four thousand dollars. So buy used. All right. Next topic, don't take on more than you can handle alone, even if you're married. Now, that's going to sound weird, but hear me out. I touched on this earlier when I was talking about someone could get ill. Someone could get ill and be down for a while. Like I, before I bought the homestead, actually about two years before I bought the homestead, I hurt my back and I couldn't work for six months. Well, in that six months, if you are the person doing the work, taking care of the animals, who's going to take your place for six months while you recuperate or have your back surgery or whatever you need done? So never do more. Never take on more than you can handle alone. And if there's two of you, you have to be able that you can handle what both of you are doing. And if you can't, you really need to rethink what you're doing because catastrophe could happen and obviously if you're married obviously I hope your marriage lasts forever but let's face it most marriages these days don't and homesteading is very stressful and I can assure you it can be very stressful to a marriage too forget about vacations I might have might have touched on that one also uh, if you got animals there are some animals like if you got chickens and rabbits and bees you still go on vacation but the minute you had goats or cows something you got to milk once or twice a day you know it's, it's one thing to ask somebody hey can you stop by and fix my or feed my chickens and rabbits every two or three days make sure they got water it's another thing to look at someone and say hey can you come milk my goats twice a day or milk my cow twice a day ain't gonna work if you got a cow or goat 
forget about taking vacations. Um, I took vacations the first two years I was here. First three years I was here, I took vacations. I'm not having one since because I got goats and I just can't leave now. Um, learn to embrace the suck. Um, I probably briefly touched on this in the second one. Not everything on the homestead is going to be perfect. Some things are just going to plain suck. You can have some weeks where every day sucks, but you if you got animals to take care of, you still got to do it, whether it sucks or not. And it's just better off instead of getting aggravated over the suck, just be okay with it <laughs> and go on. Um, eventually it won't suck and there's just no sense in wasting energy on thinking that something sucks. So just embrace it from the beginning.